All right then, so we've got our header now. The next thing we want to do is create that grid of photos below this, the first section. And when we click on those photos, then it zooms open to the full screen. Now to do this, it's gonna be a little bit of a tricky layout and it's gonna involve a grid where we're pushing and pulling columns and offsetting them. So I'm gonna explain all this as we go along because we've not really covered it yet, but we're gonna begin just by creating a simple grid to lay out these images. And remember, I'm using these images over here. So first of all, let's go to this photo grid section. And what I'll do is create a section tag, first of all, give this a class of container. And the reason I'm using a section tag is just so I can um, target it using my own CSS later if I need to. So this right here is gonna have an ID equal to photos. And what I'm also gonna do is give this a class of section as well. And this just applies a little bit of margin at the top. All right, so we have this section right here. Now, the first thing I'd like to do is create a div with a class of row. So we're gonna have a row of elements first of all. Now there's gonna be three rows in total and each row is gonna have an image on the left or right and it's also gonna have a bit of text, a heading and a p tag. So first of all, let's create the container for the image. We'll say div, then give this a class of col and we'll say s12. So on small screens and up, it's gonna take 12 columns in width, this div, so the full screen. And then for large screens, it's gonna take up four columns in width. So that's a third of the width. Okay, so inside this div, we need our image now. So the image source is gonna be inside the image folder, which I just showed you. And we'll use an image called portrait.jpg. All right then, so what I'm gonna do is give this a class. In fact, I'll show you that in a second. I'm gonna save that first of all and show you on a screen. Now, if we zoom down here, you can see this thing right here, this image, it's massive and it's going off the screen. Now, why is that? Well, it's because the image is this big naturally. Now, if we want this to be max width 100% of the container and make it responsive, all we need to do is give this a class of responsive hyphen IMG. And if we save this now, then we can see if we look over here, now it just takes up the width of those four columns. All right, pretty cool. So then the next thing we want to do after that is create a div for the text. And this is going to, again, have a call class S12. So for small size screens, it's going to be 12 columns in width, then L6 this time on larger screens and up. And inside here, what we'll do is a H2 first of all, we'll give this a class of indigo to make the text indigo. And in fact, it's indigo text, otherwise it will be background. Then we want to say text hyphen darken just to darken that color a little bit by four. And inside we'll say portraits. So this image represents the portraits that we take. All right, so underneath that we'll do a P tag. And I'm just going to paste in some lorem ipsum. And then if we go over here, we can see that title now right there. So that's looking a bit better. Not great yet, but it's looking a bit better. All right then, so what I'll do now is just copy this row so I can paste it in two more times. So one and two, and we need to scoot this back in so that it looks a bit better. Grab all that. All right, that's looking better. And what I'd like to do is change this image right here because we don't want portrait three times. So I'll change this one to city and I'll change this one to nature. And we'll also change the H2 as well. So cityscapes. And then down here, we'll change this one to nature. All right, so let's preview this now. And we should see all of those three right here. So that's looking all right. But if you remember, what we did is we had some of them over to the right, or rather just this one over to the right, and the text was on the left. So what we could do is swap things around in here, but instead, what I'm going to show you is how to basically push columns or pull them. And I'm also going to show you how to offset them. So first of all, I'm going to show you how to offset certain things. So at the top right here, we see this thing right here and it's right next to this. Now this is four columns in width and this is six columns in width, meaning we have another one column over here for space. Now, what I'd like to do is just offset this thing right here 
by one column. That is basically what we're going to do is give it an offset of one over to the right. So to do that, all we need to do is come to our text, which is here, and give it a class of offset. We want it for large screen, so we say dash L. Then we want to offset it by one column. So let's save that and view it again. And now we can see it's scooted over by one column, right? So we'll do exactly the same now for the bottom one because I want that to move across as well. So let's go down here to the nature one and we'll say offset for large screens and then one. Now it's not going to offset this for small screens because this means large only. So now we can see, oops, I've done the wrong thing there. I don't want to offset the whole thing. I want to offset the text down here. So let's save that and view it again. Okay, so now we can see the text has been offset a little bit and this looks a bit better space wise. Now what we want to do is basically switch these two things right here so that the image is over here and the text is over here. Now to do that, what I'm going to do is take this stuff right here and I'm going to push that way over here. Now if I offset it, what's going to happen is it's going to basically offset the whole thing, this and this, and try to push them both way over there. I just want to push this one element right here over to this side. So how are we going to do that? Well, let's go to the middle one over here and come to this thing, which is the surrounding element for the image. And I'm going to say push, and it's only going to be for large screens. So I'll say L and I want to push it by seven columns. So we're going to start at column seven, basically, and it's going to be four columns in width. So that takes us up to column 11, right? So if I save this and view it now, we can see we've taken this and we've pushed it way over here and it's not affected where this text is. We'll just push this way over here. Now, what I'm going to do is take this stuff right over here and I'm going to pull it back this way. So I'll go to the text underneath this and I will say pull for large screens. And then what I'm going to do is pull this five columns to the left, not seven because if I pull it seven columns to the left, then it's going to go out of the screen or something like that. I only want to pull it five because the original space here is only four columns in width, right? So if I pull this five away, then it's going to pull it back to the start. So L5, save that, view that in a browser. Okay, and now we can see this is looking a bit better. In fact, I could pull that four like so. And that's more like it. All right, so what I'd like to do now is maybe take this right here and offset it one to the right so that it goes a little bit further than this text. So I will get this thing and just say offset and then for large screens, one to the right. So we'll save that. And okay, that looks a bit better. And next I wanna take this text and I basically wanna bring it over here. And that's the reason, by the way, I added five. What we'll do is change this to five now because I did that offset and we'll pull it back one. Okay, so that's looking good. Now I wanna take this text and I wanna kind of align it over this way. So to do that, all I need to do is give a right align class to the text. So we'll place it in here so it grabs the H2 and the P and we'll say right hyphen align. Save that and view that in a browser. Okay, and now that is looking a lot better. So what we've done is basically created our grid and then we've just played around with it by using offsets to push things, uh, the whole row basically across or whatever's there across. And then we've used push and pull to just push and pull those individual items uh, from one side to another. Now, I think what I'll do is just offset this thing one to the right as well, because I think that gap needs closing up a little bit. So I'm just going to grab this and I'm going to say offset L and then one. So let's save that. Okay, that is looking better now. All right. So I also wanted to show you how to click on these different things so that they zoom open when you click on them. And that is very, very easy to do. All we need to do is go to each one of these different images and we need to add a class of material boxed. So material boxed like so. We'll copy that and we'll paste it in each one of these dudes as well. And then we need to initialize that down here in the jQuery. All we need to do is grab those material boxed images. So we'll say dot material boxed that grabs all of those. And then we use a method called material box. 
like so. Okay, so if we save that, now when we click on one of these, it should zoom like so. Pretty awesome, right? So now we have our header, our nav, and we have this first section right here. Now, I'd like to do one more thing, in fact, just give this a bit more space at the top. So what I'll do is zoom up to the top over here, and where we have our styles, I'm going to target the section tag like so. And inside that, we'll say padding top is going to be 4VH VW and the padding bottom is going to be 4VW. VW is a unit that is going to be relative to the viewport width. So the smaller the screen, the smaller the padding. The larger the screen, the larger the padding. It's all relative. Save that and view it again. And we'll just add the dot right there to get the class of section and save it. Okay, now this works. Okay, so I know this has been a bit of probably a mind melt because we've been just grabbing columns and moving them and pushing them and pulling them all over the place, but really it's not that hard. We can offset things, we can pull things, and we can push things. Just study the code and it will all make sense to you eventually.